is the 2022 Hyundai Kona N Line. Not the Kona N, this is the Kona N Line. Well, what does that mean? Well, it makes less power than the Kona N, although it doesn't cost nearly as much. So the question is, is the Kona N Line any good? That's what we're gonna find out. I believe it was Woody Allen who said, be original, don't steal. But if you're gonna steal, steal from the best. Why am I mentioning that? Because I need to explain to you exactly what the Kona N line is since Hyundai literally stole the idea from Audi. Here's what I mean. You can buy an Audi A4. You can also buy a much more expensive and powerful Audi S4. But if you can't quite swing the S4, they will sell you the A4 S line. And that's exactly what's happening here with the Kona. You can get a base Kona, you can get a Kona N, or for less money, you can get the Kona N line. And what Hyundai is doing here, and a couple other manufacturers are doing as well, they're carving out a little bit of white space in a pretty crowded segment, right? They have these compact SUVs, which have a little bit of sportiness baked into them. The competitors include the Mazda CX-30 Turbo, the Kia Seltos, which actually has the same engine, and the Subaru Crosstrek Sport, which finally gets a bigger and more powerful engine. Who is buying these vehicles? Well, put very simply, it's people that want a subcompact SUV, but they wanna have a little bit of fun as they're driving them as well. Let's talk design, because at least from the front, man, there is a lot of it. Look at this thing's face. It's crazy, like, you've got this headlight section here and then a bunch of space and then another headlight. This is, this is wild looking. And then three nostrils, just like a Ferrari 250 GTO for some reason. I mean, I know the reason. They wanted to make it look sporty, maybe as a bridge too far, but lots of craziness going on up front. There's like, you know, this wild looking grill, there's another crazy grill below it. It is pretty aggressive and I guess it does look sportier than the base model. So mission accomplished up front. Coming down the side, it, it's not great. The wheels are really good. I, I think those are very nice wheels, but the rest of it, it's just kind of dowdy. Uh, yeah, there's an N-Line badge, and that's about it from the side. Very unremarkable until you get to the rear where it picks up the uh, sportiness again. You've got this cool looking spoiler. You've got a diffuser for some reason and two pipes. So that's pretty good front and rear. Look, Hyundai had a tough job, right? They had to take a base economy car and dress it up and make it look sporty. And I think for the most part, they accomplished their goals. Here on the interior of the Kona N-Line, well, it's not as differentiated as the exterior. I suppose the designers did what they could, but they were not allowed to do very much. Uh, how do you tell them apart? Well, if you're in a regular Kona, you won't see red accents on the vents, red accents on the seats and on the steering wheel and here on the shifter, and there won't be these two little end plaques, even though this is an end line. As far as the materials go, look, this begins life as a $22,000 car, and everything you touch is basically representative of that fact. One nice thing, the infotainment screen. This is what you get in every single Hyundai and, and, and all the Kias. So it's very good. It's kind of better than what you find in the rest of the segment. It's, it's legible, it's smart, it works well, it's fast. And let's say you don't want to stare at all these icons. You can just swipe it away. You have this nice calm screen. Also, there, of course, there is the fan favorite sounds of nature. You can listen to a lively forest, calm sea waves, and even a rainy day, et cetera, et cetera. Look, it's a compact SUV. There's not a lot of space up here in the front. There's not a lot of space in the second row. If you put the seats down, you get a medium amount of space. In conclusion, design-wise, they did much more work on the exterior of the car than they did in here. The good news about the Kona N-Line is it's much more than just a body kit. Under the hood, there's a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine that for 2022 produces 20 more horsepower than it did last year. We are talking about 195 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque, all of which is routed through a quick shifting seven speed dual clutch transmission that hits all four wheels. It's also fun to drive. And we have found over the years that Anything on this platform does make a really good driving car. Talking about the Kia Soul, the Kia Seltos, doesn't matter. They're more fun than the rest of the vehicles in the segment. And it's fairly efficient. 
27 miles per gallon in the city, 32 miles per gallon on the highway. When it comes to safety, the Kona N-Line is good. And it's not just me saying that, the IIHS has rated this car good. It also gets a five-star crash rating from the feds. And it comes with a bunch of standard automatic safety features, such as blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, and lane keeping assist. And the Kona N-Line takes it further. This has adaptive cruise control with stop and go. What does that mean? Well, it means if you're sitting in traffic and it grinds to a halt, the car will automatically stop. And if the traffic in front of you starts to go, the car will start to go all on its own, which is a cool piece of technology. It also comes with adaptive high beams. How much? Okay, for 2022, you can get into a Hyundai Kona for as little as $22,395. If you want to step up to an N-Line, you're going to add about $6,000 to that price. And as tested, this one just cracks $31,000. But what about the competition? I'm glad you asked. The N-Line here is about $1,000 more than the Subaru Crosstrek Sport. It's about $1,000 less than the Kia Seltos. And if you want that Mazda CX-30 Turbo, it's around $2,000 more than this cost. So you can see, just in terms of value within the segment, the N-Line is pretty good. If there's one thing that I want you to know about the 2022 Hyundai Kona N-Line, it's that it is a pretty sweet little compact SUV. Yes, it is not the actual Kona N, but the actual Kona N actually costs $8,000 more than this. And while this is a $6,000 premium over the regular Kona, I think it's worth the money because for a very reasonable sum, you get a distinctive looking, great to drive little SUV that is a bargain compared to the competition. I don't want to call this thing Goldilocks, but if the bed fits, sleep in it. To see vehicle rankings and a complete buyer's guide, please visit motortrend.com cars.